Well, it's 4.30. It's dark out already. There's no blues games on tonight, and it's negative 136 degrees. Might as well go ahead and virtualize TrueNAS in a Proxmox VM. Well, let's look on the bright side, though. Beer's nice and cold. The first thing we are going to want to do is download TrueNAS. So I'll have a link in the description for this website, make it a little easier on you. It's going to want you to log in with one of your accounts. You use whichever account you want to use. I'm going to use uh, my GitHub account, and then it'll bring, it, bring you to this page right here. All you're going to do is click on download and wait for it to download. With the download finishing up now, finally, we're going to go ahead and log into our server. And we're going to want to upload the ISO we just downloaded onto Proxmox. The way we're going to do that is we are going to go to our, is it local? Yeah, go to our local uh, disk, click on ISO image, and we're going to click on upload. We're going to go to the downloads directory or wherever you downloaded that file. Click on it, click on open, click on upload. Once the upload's completed, we're going to go ahead and we're going to create our virtual machine. So click on create. I want to give it a number of 203, just my preference. I'm going to call it true NAS. And uh, we'll click on start, uh, start at boot. Next, it's going to ask you where that ISO is. I put it on the local drive, and where is she at? There it is, true NAS. Oh, looks like I had two of them. Oh, yeah, I was playing around with it before. So, true NAS, we're going to hit next. Your uh, graphics card is fine at default. Hard drive. Now, I'm going to use the local ZFS. Now, this is just the boot drive for, uh, for your system here. So... I'm going to leave it at 32 uh, gigabytes. That's that's plenty. Next, I'm going to give it uh, two sockets and, yeah, four cores should be enough. Now, memory. I'm going to crank it up to 48 gigabytes of memory because uh, I plan on adding enough disks. Basically, they say with your system, if we go back to the... True NAS uh, website, you can see right here your requirements. You need 16 gigabytes of RAM memory just for the system. And then you want to have one gigabyte of RAM per terabyte of storage that you uh, put into the machine. So calculator, let's see. So 48 gig comes out to 49152. Click next. Network will leave it as it is and confirm it and start after creation. We'll go ahead and go into the console and we'll widen the screen out here. Uh, let's see, it's gonna auto boot in three, two, one, auto boot. All right, the installation is fairly simple. You want option one, click enter. It's gonna ask you which uh, hard drive to install it on. We only have one right now, so we're gonna hit okay. Uh, warning, this will erase all partitions. We're good with that. Give it a password. Click OK. Uh, you want to boot from, let's see what it says here. Okay, it says that BIOS is uh, suggested for legacy and enterprise hardware. Well, got enterprise hardware, so we're going to pick the BIOS and let it run. And let's go ahead and reboot. Okay, once it gets done rebooting, it's going to give you these this little console setup, which basically gives you options to change some of your network settings or to reset passwords or your configuration, all that. The only thing we're really interested in is this guy right here. This is our IP address. That's how we're going to log on to our new uh, virtual machine. So let's go ahead and get out of this and open a new window. And we're going to do HTTPS colon hack hack. 192.168.1.242 it's going to bring up your log on screen your username is root and your password is the password you gave it 
So then it's going to bring you up on your dashboard and here you can see it's got your basic information about your your machine it uh, you know which version you're using your CPU threads which is four which we gave it your usage on those threads how many gigabytes you have and it'll break it down to how many are being used for uh, for your ZFS or your services or how much space is free. Here's your uh, network interface connections and everything. So it's just a nice little breakdown of what you have going on with this system. And over here on the left, we have quite a few different different menu options, you know, your accounts where you can set up your users and your groups and uh, system. Where you can just set up different uh, options for your system. Now this is gonna be a real high level uh, look at TrueNAS. So I'm not gonna go through each and every option on here. But one thing I do wanna do is I wanna give this a static IP address. So to do that, we're gonna hit network and we're gonna to go to interface, click on this little arrow over here on the right and it'll show you everything about your, your setup right now. Well, I wanna to go to edit, I wanna take it off DHCP and I wanna give it a static IP address of 29 get that set hit apply and then we're going to have to uh, restart the system so power restart confirm restart and we can go over here to uh back to our proc prox mox machine and you know kick back have fun and watch it uh shut down and reboot And now that it has completed rebooting, you can see that our IP address has changed to 29. So let's go back over and we're gonna change that 242 to 29, hit enter, and there we are. Relog back in. So now that whenever you uh, have a machine or a program referencing your TrueNAS, it's on a static IP address. It'll never change. Your router won't change it. So you're, you're good to go. Uh, the next thing we need to do is go ahead and give it some storage. Now, to do that, you click on pool and you click on add. And you see there are no options right now for me to have storage for it because I haven't given it any more, uh, any more hard drives to use. So I'm going to take these two. These are real small, 120 gigabyte uh, SSDs, and I'm gonna slide them into the uh, server here. Now, those are old disks that I just installed into the server, and to pass them through, I wanna do a little prep work and delete any partitions that are on them right now. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna go back to our uh, Proxmox server. We're going to go to the low res node and we're going to go to disks. And what we're looking for is we're looking to find the two ADATA disks, which are these guys right here. And we want to take note of what Proxmox has designated them as. So you can see right there, they've designated them as SDC and SDD. So with that information, we're gonna go ahead and we're going to go into the shell of the node and we are going to use an, uh, a CF disk command, this guy right here, to format those disks. And what we need to do is we need to tell it which disk we wanna format or we want to delete the partitions on. So we'll do a, a SDC, we'll hit enter. It'll bring up the information on that disks for those disks. And you can see right there are the two uh, partitions that are currently on it. And I want to delete those guys. So I'll just arrow down to it. And then on the bottom of the screen, we'll go to delete. And then we'll delete the second partition that frees up all the space. We want to hit new. And it's going to ask you how much space you want to uh, make this disk out of. We want to use the whole disk. We want it to be primary. We're good. It set up the uh, the new partition right there for us. So now we can just go ahead and quit out of it. And I want to go ahead and do the second disk. So I'll just change it to SDC, SDD from SDC. And same deal. Delete. Go down. Delete. 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 All right. New partition whole disk and we want to use the whole thing we're happy with it it made it so let's quit so the next thing we want to do is pass those disks 
through to the server. And we're going to use this command right here. And there's a couple things we need to know or to tell the uh, command. First one is it's going to want to know the VM number. Now we're passing it through our true NAS server, so it'll be 203. The next, it's asking for the type of disk. Is it a SATA disk? Is it a SAS disk? What kind of disk is it? And then it also wants a number designation, which corresponds to the bay or port that you plugged your SATA disk into. In my case, I plugged those into one and two. Uh, this guy right here, volume number, if you're using a partition instead of using the whole disk you're only using one partition you can designate that there and the last thing it wants right here is the drive identifier by id number now we can get that to get the uh, drive identifier we're going to use this command right here ls space slash dev slash disk slash by id we'll hit enter and it will bring up all the disks that are on the machine again we want to look for our adata disks there's the two of them right there. And we're going to want to tell it this whole string string right here. So to do that, let's go ahead and bring that command back up. And we're going to take this information out and we're going to copy this. And we're going to paste it in right there. Then we're going to go down and we're going to, I'm not, again, I'm using the whole disk. So I'm going to take out that uh partition variable i'm going to tell it it's a sata disk it's in bay one and then i want to connect it to vm 203 i'll hit enter it'll go ahead and do that for us. so let's run it again and get the second disk attached we'll remove that copy this right here we will paste it in and then it's actually in bay two so we're going to change one to two we still want it to go to vm 203 so we'll leave that alone we'll hit enter and it passed it through. So let's go back to our true NAS hardware and you can see those two disks right there waiting to be utilized by the VM. But first thing we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to reboot the VM so that it knows those disks are there. So let's go ahead and reboot. All right, with the VM rebooted, let's go back over and log back in. And we're already at the pools. We're gonna hit add. Let's create a pool and all of a sudden it knows those two disks are there so i want to use both of them so i'll just click this little guy up here and it'll check both of them hit the arrow that'll move it over to the the data vdeb and i want to use all of them and it's true nas is going to suggest to you the the best set up for however many disks that you have in this case i only have two so it's suggesting a mirror uh if you don't want a mirror, let's say you want something just for speed, you can change it to a stripe. It's going to warn you that if one of the disks fails, uh, that you're going to lose all your data, whatever. It's up to you. Choose whichever one you want. If we had more disks, though, it would probably suggest a RAID Z or a RAID Z2. If you don't know what those designations are, check the description. I'm going to add a uh, link to a really good article that explains the different RAID configurations for TrueNAS. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna force it into a stripe. We're gonna give it a name, name it whatever you want. Let's just, I'm gonna call it, well, heck, I got a bunch of test disks out there already. So let's name it something crazy. How about test two? And then create, confirm, create the pool. For some reason, I had to refresh the screen there. It just got locked in that spinning thinking mode but it was done already and you can see right there there's our pool test little t2 uh and it has 211.18 gigabytes of available space if you go up to the dashboard here you can see it added it added that information right down here and it tells you everything that you might want to know about it so all right now that we have a pool create it we're going to want to create a data set inside that pool and the data set's actually what you're you're accessing from different vms or whatever we're going to connect it to the uh, desktop here by the end of this so let's go ahead and add a data set and we're going to name it low res because it's going to be uh one that i'm using and i'm just going to leave everything the same i'm going to hit submit and 
it's going to create the data set for us. Next thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to edit the permissions because right now everything is under root and the group wheel, which kind of everybody can get into that if, if you figure the password out. But before we do that, we need to create an account and I'm going to create a new user and I'm going to hit add and I'm going to name the user low res. And then once you do that, it's going to give it a username. It's just going to change everything to lowercase though. Uh, you can put an email address in there if you want. And then we're going to give it a password and confirm the password. Leave the user ID as 1000. And I am going to give the group write permission also, because once we create this user, it's also going to create a group under the same name. And the last thing we're going to check is this right here, Microsoft account. This will just make it a little easier for us when we connect a Windows machine like my desktop to the true NAS uh, data set that we just created. So let's go ahead and submit. All right, once it's done, it'll you'll see we now have a new user called Lorez, and he's right there. And if you go up to groups, there is our group low res right there. So now that we have the user and group created, let's go back to storage, pool, and we'll go over to our data set that we created. Let's edit the permissions. We're going to change the username to low res. We're going to apply the username. It already changed it to group for us. We're going to apply that group also. We want it to have read write permission, and I'm going to pick traverse and apply permissions recursively which will mean which means if we make any data sets underneath that data set we will already have a username and group of low res set up for them so we'll go ahead and hit save and let's go ahead and double check the permissions make sure they took and there they are low res and low res so now that pool is set up as a, a low res is pool as a user and group so great awesome fine dandy let's go ahead now and connect it to our desktop right here and the first step to doing that is to create a share we want to share that data set so we're going to go down to shares and i want to create a window share so we'll click on that we're going to add and it's going to ask you the path so we need to tell it that hey we want to share test little t2 so click on your little arrow click that click it it picks it up here you want to give it a name give it a name of something i'm gonna name it low res just so that hey i'm not the brightest guy in the world hey i know this is my data set now so i'm gonna leave everything as it is and i'm gonna click submit it'll start automatically cool let's do it and it has been enabled so all right Part one done. So let's go over into a Windows Explorer. We're going to click on this PC and up here we should have an option that says map network drive. Click on it. Uh, you can change the drive a letter if you want to. You can make it whatever A, B. Can't make it C because that's our hard drive. And then we want to tell it where our share is. So hack hack 192.168.1.29 slash low res. And so when I set the uh, share and the username up, I use the same username and password to log on to this computer. So once I hit finish, it should automatically uh, log into that drive. So let's see if it works. And there it is. We double click on it. You see there's nothing there right now. We're just got the low res and we now have access to that data share that we just created in TrueNAS. And there you go. A quick and easy install of TrueNAS in a Proxmox virtual machine. Job done. We did it. Cool. So hopefully in the future, we'll go ahead and create a few more videos uh, showing how to utilize the plugins that are built in to uh, true NAS like Plex and sync things in there also and a couple other ones. But, you know, we'll see how it goes. Uh, if you like this type of uh, video or material, do me a favor, go ahead and uh, karate chop the like button and roundhouse kick the subscribe button and we'll catch you later.